Yeah, some people have a worse office than me on this Wednesday morning. Aboard the Pacific Yellowfin, which, by the way, is a floating luxury wilderness lodge. We're going to get a bit of a tour of this 1943 vessel coming up next on BT. Stay with us. We'll be right back. lap of luxury, floating luxury here, uh, the Pacific Yellowfin. And Colin, this is truly a beautiful ship. It's Thank an you. old one. It is indeed. It was launched in 1943, Second World War for the United States Army. Excellent. Now we are, again, we call this a floating lodge. And you and you were just sort of mentioning it sort of is set up like that as well, That's right? That's correct. Yeah. It's set up with a selection of hardwoods and softwoods to give it that very comfortable lodge type feel for the Pacific West Coast. And I could see myself, you know, moseying up to the little bar still half having maybe a little breakfast here in the galley. That's correct. Tell us a little bit about the setup of this as well. Well, the idea is that the chef uh, works in an open galley so that he uh, is constantly with his guests and they watch him cook. And if they catch a salmon, he can sushi it up here right in front of them. And of course, we got some of our crew here yes, as well, we do. too. A little yes, way. we have our Dominic and Janine. <laughs> Welcome. Let's make our way to the stateroom. Um, so 1943 vessel, it does have quite a long history. That's correct. It worked in the Second World War, then it was a research vessel, then it worked uh, in the uh, uh, Caribbean uh, chasing down Che Guevara and uh, Fidel Castro with the United Fruit Company, which was, a, as we know, a front for the CIA, and then it ended up as a lodge, or not a lodge, but a commune in San Francisco during the Haight-Ashbury days. Wow. So, She's been around quite a bit now. And we're now in one of the staterooms here. How this, big is this? This is the full width of the ship. So this is basically 28 feet across. This used to be the, re, uh, the laboratory while she was a research vessel. So this is where they did all their inspection of fish and sardines and stuff like that. Now it's a double poster bed with her own en suite. Hot water heating running through all of the beds and closets to keep everything nice and toasty. And uh, this is quite a quite an excellent room. Well, it's a beautiful ship. We're going to talk a little bit more about the luxury wilderness lodge, the floating luxury wilderness lodge, uh, a little bit later, Michelle, just before eight o'clock. For more details on the Pacific Yellowfin, and of course the charters that you can have if you have that kind of cash, maybe you and I can get a bit of a raise. Uh, you can go to their website for more details. That sounds good. And hey, say hi to Janine for me. I went to high school with her. So. She's going to be in the next segment. I will for sure. Yes, on the bow of the Pacific Yellowfin on. On Granville Island. Coming up next, we're going to introduce you to a few of the other wilderness lodges of the Magnificent Seven. This is just one of them, and it's a floating one. Stay with us. You're watching BT. It's beautiful aboard. Exactly, and we are aboard the Pacific Yellowfin, which is go. the go, floating luxury wilderness lodge, one of the Magnificent Seven. Janine, uh, how did this kind of concept come to be? Well, they're all independently owned and operated, and all the owners used to run into each other on the uh, travel industry circuit, and they realized they had great synergies between them, and so they formed the Magnificent Seven. Excellent. Now, we're going to kind of make our way again to the bow, but let's talk about a few of the other ones. Uh, Nemo Bay. Okay, so it's uh, located on the edge of the Great Bear Rainforest, and it's uh, a fishing lodge, and they're essentially known for their heli fishing and lots of other experiences, such as paddle boarding with dolphins. And of course, you were just recently at Tweedsmere. Oh, Tweedsmere, yep, it's in the Bellaquilla Valley, and uh, they also offer um, heli skiing in the winter. I was just there a couple of weeks ago, amazing. And in the summer, grizzly viewing tours. Wow, excellent. Let's talk about Clayquat Sound. Okay, so it's located up near um, Tofino, up uh, Clayquat Sound, and it's really like quintessential luxury tented camp with loads of experiences like horseback riding, archery, rock climbing, you name it. And these are just a few. Thanks very much, Janine. These are just a few. Of course, there are seven. Of course, we are aboard the floating uh, wilderness lodge. Now, the point here, Colin, is that you bring everything people need, right? That's correct. You don't need to bring one single thing with you. We have six motorbikes, 12 mountain bikes, 12 kayaks, paddle boards, every toy that you can bring with you, fishing gear, rain gear, boots, wellingtons, the whole shamals. The whole shamals. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. For more details on the Magnificent Seven, you can go to magnificent7.ca. And for more details on the Pacific Yellowfin, which is quite the ship, Jody, you can check out their website as well. We are now, uh, Colin, in the main engine room. That's correct. We're in the main engine room, and we have twin Atlas Imperial engines here, built in 1943, California. They are the originals to the ship, and Jack, our engineer here, takes a great care of them, and they're in fine condition. Can we start it up? You betcha. All right, Dominic. So 
what's Jack doing right there? He's uh, starting the engine. So what we have now are the rockers are all moving. Everything is outside of the engine. Which you, in your, every engine that you have today, everything's on the inside of a cover. These engines, however, have everything on the outside. So everything has to be oiled and greased every four hours. So when you hear in the past about having greasers and oilers, this is the job they did, taking care of all these moving parts. How many crew members will you have on this ship? We have six crew members, uh, two in the engine room, chef and a stewardess, captain and a chief mate. Excellent. And hopefully I try to stay out of the way here. For more details on the Pacific Yellowfin, you can go to their website. More details on the Magnificent 7. Go to magnificent7.ca. Jody and Kyle. Isn't this cool? Yeah, now on the bridge of the Pacific Yellowfin, and I wonder uh, if I have to go 10 and 2 with this. I'm not sure. We're going to find out from the captain himself up next on BT. Stay with us. We're aboard the Pacific Yellowfin, hanging out on Granville Island. It's, we can call it a ship. What if we said a boat? Is that like an insult? Well, no, we can call it a small ship. Okay, a small ship. Uh, a Pacific Yellowfin is what they're calling it, as well as a, a, a floating luxury wilderness lodge as well. Uh, more details uh, coming up later on their website. But give us a little bit of the lay of the land on the bridge here, Colin. Yeah, this is the bridge. We have the original telegraph to the ship. So gives all the instructions down to the engine room. It still works great. However, uh, to meet with Transport Canada requirements, the ship is fully automated. So we have GPS systems, satellite systems, flux gate systems, and we even have still the uh, magnetic co compass, which after this show, we're actually going to go out and have recalibrated. But we have all of the radars and AIS programs, everything that's uh, required on a ship, a working ship of today. And a barber shop uh, chair. That's correct. This is a very famous famous chair. In fact, this chair was in the movie Mississippi Burning. So the last owner of the boat had access to props and uh, he found this chair and put it on the ship. It is on the left hand side of the bridge and it is where the captain's chair is generally positioned. Can we do the whistle real quick here before That's we go correct. to Michelle? What so we, Michelle? What we have on the ship is a World War II attack whistle from a United States destroyer. Here she goes. <laughs> Wow, super cool here. For more details on the Pacific Yellowfin, you can go to their website. Also on the Magnificent 7, go to magnificent7.ca, Michelle.